Yeah. yeah, it was fun. All right, welcome everyone to the April 18th, uh, 2023 Denver Landmark Preservation uh, Commission meeting. Um, uh, the first order of business will be introduction of the commission members. Um, I will go ahead and go first. My name is Julie Johnson. I am a Historic Conservation Project Manager, and I was nominated by the group at large. Very interesting. Kevin Dykes, I'm an architect, but I'm nominated by the I'm Eric Borzell, I'm an architectural historian and preservation Nick um, Fusianos, an architect nominated by the American Institute of Architects. I'm Gary Petrie. I'm an architect and I was nominated by the Denver Planning Board. Uh, hi, I'm George Dennis, uh, retired law enforcement, and I was nominated by History Colorado. I'm Aaron Hummel. I'm a landscape architect and I was nominated by the American Institute of Architects. And I'm Jen Capetto. Um, I'm Landmark Preservation staff, and I was supposed to stop sharing so that you guys they could see you. So sorry to the public. <laughs> I forgot about that part. Let's do better next time. That's totally fine. Alrighty, I will officially call the meeting to order now. Um, meeting records for approval. There were no records. I forgot to send them to that's you. Really, that's really okay. We've got other things that we need. We can do. Um, so the first uh, thing that we like to do at the beginning of, um, oh, I'll do the audio tips. Um, so if you are joining us uh, virtually, um, for better sound quality, we encourage you to download Zoom on your desktop, laptop, tablet, or mobile device. Uh, you can click audio settings to bring up an additional menu, add a background noise suppression, test your speaker and microphone, and adjust the next one volume so we can all understand each other. For presenters or public commenters, when it is your turn to speak, to mute or unmute, click on the little microphone icon at the bottom of your screen. Expanding the menu next to the microphone will reveal additional options. You can select your speaker and microphone devices, and you can test your microphone and speakers just the maximum of the values. If you still have audio challenges, switch to phone for audio. Um, and if you're really having problems, you can give us an email uh, and we'll try to fix it. We'll try to figure it out for you. Um, the first thing we like to do at the beginning of every uh, meeting is a public comment period for members of the public. Um, anyone can talk to us uh, for two minutes. Uh, the comments are limited to historic preservation in Denver in general. Uh, it's not about any of the projects that are on the agenda today, but if you have anyone out there in the public has a comment, about historic preservation in Denver in general, please raise your hand. We have nobody there. Okay. Um, we have an additional uh, commission member who's just arrived. Graham, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Graham Johnson, project manager. Okay. Thank you, Graham. All right. We are moving on then, since there were no public comments in this uh, period, uh, to the consent agenda. Now, these are routine design review items, which means design guidelines that are recommended for commission approval without discussion. Applicants with items passed on the consent agenda should coordinate separately with the landmark preservation staff to receive their certificate of appropriateness. There is no public comment for consent agenda, consent agenda items. Um, the process is I will announce the con consent agenda by address. Uh, I'll ask the commissioners if they have any desire to remove anything off of the agenda or if they have any conflicts of interest on any of the items. Uh, the commission will make a motion and vote on um, the consent agenda. So, first of all, we have 2023 COA 10169 Elati Street in the Baker neighborhood. We have 2022 COA 350 at 33. 00 Alcott Street, Potter Highlands. And we have 2023-TAXC-005 at 3272 Newton Street on Packard's Hill. First of all, commissioners, uh, does anyone have any concerns? Would you like to discuss any of the items pulled up from the consent? 
consent agenda. Okay, it looks like there aren't any, there are no concerns. Um, do I hear a motion to approve as presented? Thank you, Erica. Um, to approve items 2023-COA-101 at 69 Alati Street, 2022-COA-350 at 3300 Alcott Street, and 2023-TAFC-5 at 3272 Blue Street. Erica, thank you. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Erin has seconded the motion. Uh, will uh, uh, all in favor say aye? Aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Anyone abstain? All right, the motion. So you're opposed? I am not opposed. Okay. Oh, you were saying nay if you, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, I'm saying, the meeting record, if sorry. You're, <laughs> if you're opposed, say nay, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm very happy with okay. it. Okay. <laughs> All right, the motion. <laughs> and we are moving on. We have, we don't have any public. Um, public hearings today. So we're going to dive right into the design review project. You want to let people know that they can leave it if they're on. Thank you. If you had a, if you are online with us currently and you had one of the items on the consent agenda and the consent agenda was just approved and so you do not need to be with us the rest of the meeting. You can uh, work with your uh, landmark preservation staff that's been working with you recently so you can get your certificate of appropriateness. Um, you are welcome to join us for the rest of the meeting, but you don't have to. So let us move on to the design review projects. The first is 2022.CLAM-234 at 1423 Larimer Street in Larimer Square. And Crystal Marquez is our staff person. Thanks, Crystal. Thank you. There you go. Yeah, I can keep it up. So um, this application is for the Zomot Amendment for a portion of Larimer Square um, for, at 1423 Larimer Street. The proposal is to have seven existing Zomots signed in one Zomot that will be approximately 250 feet in width along the street and 125 feet in depth. The newly created Zoma is of a size and shape that matches the existing Zoma widths and depths that are found in the historic district and in the adjacent lower downtown historic district. The existing structures on the seven Zomas will remain and will be located on the one Zoma. Any proposed changes to any of the structures on the exteriors or on the site would require review and approval by the Landmark Preservation Commission in the future, or if any changes to the approval on this block floating. So here on the left, you can see the narrative that was provided by the applicant um, that you guys had for the request for additional information. Uh, states that a proposed Zomot amendment would allow the ownership team to redistribute development rights necessary to accomplish a design project that was previously approved by the Landmark Preservation Commission. So here on the right, you can see just a page from that approval. It's referenced Titled as Larimer Square, making the hometown less interesting and more safety package. Um, it was originally dated July 19th, 2022, and revised uh, January 25th of this year, and was final stamped approved uh, by Abigail Christman on 3 6, 2023. So here you can just see a page down on the left, and if you see this further package, it just gives you an idea of what has already been approved for um, this area of the block. So according to the applicant, the proposed Zomot Amendment is not currently intended to serve any other purpose um, and is not intended to be a precursor to future development, it has not yet been reviewed by the Commission. And as displayed in the previously approved documents, there's no intention to exceed existing height limits or to be removed. Crystal, commissioners, do you have any questions for Crystal? The applicants here. Um, you should be able to unmute and turn your camera on. 
There you, there you go. There we go. Sorry about that. Hi, no worries. Hi, so you have 10 minutes uh, to talk to, to us about this and please begin with your name and address for our records. My name is Justin Gross. Uh, my address is 2315 Oneida Street in Denver. Um, I don't know that I have a whole lot to add uh, to the uh, narrative that we provided there. Um, we sort of see this uh, redistribution of uh, development rights as a pre precursor to actually executing the work that uh, you all have already seen and approved. Um, so that's really just the intent of this uh, to take development rights that are available on um, other existing zone lots and be, and be able to redistribute those to uh, a portion of that northeast side of Larimer Street um, on that block. Well, that was indeed short. <laughs> Commissioners, do you have any questions for Justin? All right. Okay, Justin, gosh, thank you. Um, all right, any other questions with, for, um, oh, Steve, are there any, are there any public comments? Like yeah, I've got that on the screen. Sorry. That's okay. I'm rough. You're fine. Any any public comments? Please feel free to raise your hands. No hands okay. raised. We have no hands raised. Okay, alrighty. Then there are no public comments on this, so we'll close that. Up. Um, so um, if you have no commissioners, you have no other questions for Crystal. All right, then let's go ahead and go into deliberation. So this is, we saw this last, in our, during the last meeting. And as I understand, this is something that has to happen before they can actually do work on something we've already approved, is that correct? It's, oh, I can start, because sure. I was one of the speakers. Of course. And uh, I appreciate that the uh, provided this letter because it makes it very clear exactly why uh, the zone not amendments as the letters Thank you. The other discussion? Ask that you all please project. I'll that project. was very quiet. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll, I'll try to do better. Um, I hardly ever get told that, to be honest with you. Um, so it's a, that's a new thing for me. Any, at any rate, um, Commissioners, there's no other discussion? If, uh, if there's no discussion, then can I hear a motion to? George. Um, I move to recommend approval to the zoning administrator of application number 2022-ZLAM-000234 for the zone lot amendment at 1423 Larimer Street per section 30-6 sub 5.5 of the Denver Revised Municipal Code, presented testimony, submitted documentation, and information provided in the staff report. George, thank you. Is there a second? All right. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a vote then. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, then the motion uh, is unanimously, unanimously approved. Thank you, Justin. Uh, all right, then we will move on to our next design review project, which is 2023-COA-097 at 3032 Champa Street in Curtis Park. And our staff person is Brittany Bryan. <laughs> Hi, Brittany. Um, so our next project is for phase two design detail review of a new infill project at 332 Champa Street, which is on the old DHA site. Um, this particular project is uh, roughly across from um, Curtis Tizo Park. Um, on August 16th, 2022, the commission reviewed the phase one map. Um, On um, January 24th, 2023, the Landmark Preservation reviewed and approved the phase one mass form and context the middle for the new two-story um, Queen Anne inspired infill structure. Um, and today we will just be looking at the design detail. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Um, so the proposed structure, um, the footprint and um, ADU footprint have not changed from the phase one cemental. Uh, here on the landscape plan, you can see the proposal for a rear yard privacy fence. Um, that will be a wood fence that is six feet in height, um, located entirely in the rear yard. It actually starts um, well behind the front facade, um, so it starts here um, back uh, with the brick return. And then the front yard fencing will be a low open uh, metal picket fence that you can see in this um, fence detail view that will enclose the front yard. Uh, this uh, project will have a concrete foundation porch and concrete um, stepping blocks to the home, and then a small rear concrete uh, patio here for the um, primary structure, and then just a small landing um, for the ADU um, at this door, and then this door here, and then a um, So the, uh, the site work is very simple in nature and does meet our design guidelines um, in terms of fencing and other um, parts. Um, in terms of the building footprint, again, that has not changed. Um, I just have the floor plans in here uh, to show you the location of the air conditioning unit for the primary structure, which is located on the rooftop deck um, of the structure. Uh, so again, uh, really no changes. Um, so for this project proposal, um, the primary structure will have a smooth finished concrete. Um, the primary facade is clad in summit brick and summit red, um, and it does have a stacked bond um, brick pattern uh, that you can that will delineate string courses along the building and then a dog tooth course um, at the uh, gable return to separate the gable face. And then the gable face is a decorative herringbone brick pattern as well. Um, the roof will be a standing seam metal roof in black. Um, and then the for the porch, and then the primary roofing will be asphalt shingle. Um, this structure will have uh, metal uh, C channel lintels above the windows on the portion of the structure that is brick, and then just regular trim around the windows on the portion of the structure that is lap siding. And then the door is a full light door um, with four uh, true divided lights. Um, so generally this is um, a material selection and now I'll show you what that looks like. Um, so here you can see the materials um, proposed for that structure. Again, the primary structure is a red brick, which is typical of the Curtis Park Historic District. It is more red in color than the traditional G um, red bricks that you see historically in this district. However, that helps delineate that work as new. Um, that gable face with the herringbone pattern is going to be that same red brick. And then the um, shoulder string horses, or sorry, the stacked bond, um, they're not horses, are going to be this. Um, for here and as well as that dog patterning. Um, so all of the um, proposed windows for this structure are a uh, aluminum clad one over one double hung window. Um, those windows in elevation here. There are some fixed windows on the side elevation, um, but primarily one over one. Uh, the brick will wrap onto the side facade back a little over 14 and then it will transition into the lap siding material um, that will have a four um, inch reveal and painted a um, blue color. Um, so the rear patio um, will be fixed windows with an operable door, and then the railing for the rooftop deck will be a simple cable. Um, the accessory dwelling unit will also be clad in that same uh, lap siding with a four inch reveal um, aluminum clad windows on this structure as well, with a fixed window on the um, south facade, a simple um, garage uh, flat panel roll-up door, and then um, TPO roofing on this uh, flat roof structure with a mini split system located on the roof of the um, so in terms of the materials, um, there is a trim um, piece that transitions between the brick facade and the lap siding. Um, again, we have a foundation detail here. This is a standard brick. Um, and then the porch posts are steel columns. Um, they'll be finished in black to match that black finish of the standard 
metal group. Um, there will be a um, tongue and groove uh, ceiling on the um, porch. Um, in terms of those window details, they are all inset into the wall plane. Uh, the inset does vary depending on the cladding material. Within the brick, they're inset um, give or take five inches, and within the lap siding portion, they're inset um, give or take two inches. Um, again, the still channel on the windows that are on the brick portion of the building, and then just a um, trim, a standard trim around the windows that are sided portion of the building. Um, again, windows are aluminum clad wood, one over one, uh, some configuration with some thick windows um, proposed. And then the door is a solid wood door with four divided lights, which will be a true divided light. And then the top patio and rear, um, rear patio door is a full light. And then the accessory dwelling unit just has a solid uh, it, uh, um, so those details do meet our design guidelines for Denver landmark structures and districts. Um, so staff are recommending approval of this project proposal as we feel that the materials are high quality and compatible with the surrounding resource. Brittany, thank you. Commissioners, do you have any questions for staff? All right, thanks, Brittany. All right, is our applicant present? Hi, this is Anthony Reese, AIA. Um, Hi, hang on just hey. a second while we get this. Get okay. Ready when you're, oh, yeah, it's ready. Yep. <laughs> no, that's our staff presenter. There, there you go. It's a okay, uh, again, Anthony Reese, AIA 215 South Wadsworth Boulevard, Lakewood, Colorado 80226. Um, okay. Thanks for everybody's time on this project and your feedback on the last review. Uh, we took that to heart and worked with Brittany to revise a little bit further and uh, get this over the finish line. So I don't have anything else to add other than say thank you and looking forward to getting this project built. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> that is a record. All right. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, hang on a second. Commissioners, have you any questions for our applicant? I, I have a question regarding the roof. Um, I'm not entirely familiar with how the uh, Denver's green roof or uh, code applies, but does the black color on this, is, it, is this building subject to that code requirement? And is the black color of the proposed metal roof uh, meet the building code? Uh, no, it's not subject. Uh, and the, the rendering is a little dark. It's more, more of a musket gray, it's called. Um, but it do, the roof will have a, a solar ready component. So um, in the building permit set, we'll have to call out areas on the rear of the roof and the ADU for future solar panel connection. Uh, which is a city code requirement. Okay, so that, but there's, I know that there's a code requirement on reflectivity of roofs. I and don't that, know, yeah, sorry, I don't know if it applies here or not. To, to my knowledge, that only applies to um, buildings with 25,000 or more gross square footage. Because um, I, I know we have to deal with that on our apartment projects quite frequently. Okay, thank you. Yep. And for the record, I believe Anthony is correct there. So. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank and, you. And here's a picture um, up here. I'm circling top left. Uh -huh. It's kind of a dark gray, yeah. but not black. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, commissioners, any other questions for Anthony? Oh, all right. Anthony, thank you very much. Um, You're welcome. So, yeah. So, do we have any uh, anyone who would like to make a comment from the public? Does anyone want to raise their hand? Raise your hand, please. No hands raised. Okay. All right. Um, commissioners, did you have any other questions for staff before we deliberate? Good to go? All righty. Uh, then let's deliberate. What do you think, commissioners? Jump in. I, Please do. It seems like it's 
pretty straightforwardly within the guidelines and uh, friendly comments to have here that it's uh, details still mixed in with um, what are kind of historical British tales. It's pretty nice. Anyone else? I had the same color yellow paint on my house. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hmm. How does it meet the guidelines, Graham? Yeah, we don't. Yeah, we don't have any purview over paint. <laughs> Interior colors. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? Yes, <laughs> No other comments. I'm not hearing any. Uh, then can I hear a motion to approve? Madam Chair, I'll make a motion. To Thanks, Graham. Application of script dash COA dash 197. Phase two design details at the thirteen channel. For design guidelines 4.1, 4.5, 4.16, 4.17, 4.18, 4.19, 4.20, 4.21, 4.22, 4.23, 4.24, 4.25, 4.26, 4.27, 4.28, 4.29, 4.30, 4.31, 4.32, 4.33, 
provided a ground plan comparison and the um, setback to the primary facade is typical of the surrounding context. Um, the depth across the lot is typical of the surrounding context. It is a bit more depth than the existing um, one-story bungalow structure. Um, however, that structure is very small in nature and the applicant is proposing a standard structure that is not atypical for larger developments. Uh, the Alamo Placita Historic District. Um, so it will align with the block on the, uh, the front facade will align with the structures on the block and the porch will approach um, a typical depth. Um, it is a full width porch as you can see here. So here is a streetscape. Um, this block is a mix of one story and two story structures. Uh, you do have a Denver square and then a full of the block um, on the top of the block. Uh, Alamo Placita is a mix of one story and two story structures adjacent to each other. So that is not um, in terms of the floor plan, uh, the entrance is recessed um, slightly from the uh, front facade. That is typical of nested uh, stable forms and other forms in the Alamo Historic District. Uh, this form will have a nested gable on the rear facade as well, which is reflected in the floor plan. And then at the ground floor, um, there is this recessed motion uh, patio doors, but that is significantly set back from the primary. Uh, facade and will not be visible to the public right away due to the um, tight setbacks of the neighborhood. Um, so the applicant again is proposing a nested gable form that is inspired by the green and forms that you do see within the Alamo Placita Historic District. Um, that entrance is a side entrance, a full width porch, um, and this I believe is proposed to be doors. Um, However, it looks like it might be windows in this, but we'll look at what's that specific opening in the phase two design details. And then um, a pair of double windows on the second floor um, in the nested gable portion of the facade. And then a corner um, window on the uh, larger primary gable on the second floor. Um, there are smaller windows on the secondary facades, as you can see in this fourth elevation. And then you can also see that um, that's the cable form that will project out slightly on the south elevation um, here, but we'll show that to you in the rear. So here's that nested cable form um, that you see in the rear, and then just kind of that recessed uh, patio door um, area that you see in the floor plan. Again, this will be minimally visible right away, so staff do not have concerns over this element, although it is a little bit atypical, but this is construction. Uh, so in terms of how this proposal fits in with the surrounding historic context, um, Alamo Placita does have several Queen Anne forms within this district, and several of them are nested gable forms. Um, the width of the nested gable in this district does vary greatly, um, and I wouldn't say that there is a standard kind of width for that nested gable form, as you can see in example images provided here. Um, some of these that the applicant has provided, like 400 uh, Ogden Street, is not a nested gable form, um, but there are several nested gables within this district that uh, do have that form. Um, I'm very familiar with this district because I do live in this district. <laughs> um, in terms of elements that you see on this uh, structure, the applicant is proposing transom windows um, for their front facade. Uh, staff do have some concerns over that transom window configuration um, as uh, it does occur very minimally in this district, but is typically found on special character windows um, that are arched in nature or have some special divided light pattern. Uh, there are also a few houses that have non-historic alterations with those transom window designs. Um, so staff are recommending that the transom detail be eliminated from the phase two design detail. We do feel that the opening proportions are appropriate, um, but we just feel that it would be more typical of the neighborhood to just have not the transom detail as that's seen on more character um, and featured windows within the historic district. Again, gable, forward facing gables are very common in this neighborhood, and so are um, uh, um, sorry, I don't know where I'm going. 
So are side entrances that are on the primary gable form and not on the vested gable form that you often see in our other historic districts like Kirkland Park. Um, in terms of the second floor window above the door, staff do have some concerns over that window placement as well. Um, because if you look at the surrounding context, generally speaking, that window is of equal proportions to the windows um, in the nested gable form, and it's often centered above the door or slightly offset, but it's not typically located in the corner like the applicant is proposing today. Um, so staff are recommending a restudy of that second floor window above the door on the front facade to be more of an accent window or a window that is typical proportions with Um, so here are just some renderings of this project proposal. Um, generally, staff feel that it does meet the um, design guidelines for Denver landmark structures and districts. Um, it's compatible in terms of mass and form with the Alamo Placita Historic District. Um, however, we are recommending a restudy of this um, quarter window on the building facade and elimination of the transom window design on the facade for this project. Um, as we do not feel that is typical of them. Okay, thanks, Brittany. Uh, commissioners, any questions for Brittany? Okay. Um, so uh, I had the same immediate reaction to the corner uh, second floor window, and, and I looked through the photos in the application to see if there was precedent, and it seems like they do you have one shown? So there are some corner windows in this district. It's very rare to find it. And typically it's on the Denver Square form, not on the Queen Anne form, which they are using for their inspiration. Um, however, it's up for you as the commission to decide if that helps distinguish this as new and is appropriate for this particular project. I appreciate the explanation. I, I had one. Um, Follow up or sort of related question regarding the transoms, the south elevation, but right at the front corner. So there is another window set with uh, the same sort of proportion of two, a pair of windows with the transom over it. Do you have any concerns about that? Um, I guess I was more concerned on the front facade because that's the front facade that is most visible from the public right of way. Um, I mean, what? yeah, I, that is at the front as well. Um, but that, I, I feel like our guidelines do recommend um, secondary facades can have more variety, um, but that is close to the front for the commission to discuss if they wanted to eliminate that from the middle as well. Any other questions? No? Okay. All right, Brittany, thank you. The applicant. Excellent. Thank you very much. Welcome. Hi, Bridley. Hi, Bridley. Hi there, come on up. Oh, great. Right. Thank you. Hi. Let me pull up your Yeah, we'll get you set up. Yeah. When we get you set up, if you could start with your name and address for our records. We've sure. got 10 minutes. And will you be mixing it with people? They, they might uh, interject. Great. Let me know when you want me to uh, move a slide, a okay, slide. Sure. Okay. Good. Yeah, we, um, we have just a few uh, additional images. Uh, we can pull those up uh, from the neighborhood to show. Um, again, these are showing the uh, Queen Anne style. Um, structures. Um, many of those have transoms above, above on the peak of the home window. Just to have that next one. I'm going to ask you to step back for a minute because I'm going to see your next. <laughs> there we go. Uh, again, these um, show examples of uh, transom windows. Usually there's a, a pair or a Three, two or three windows uh, with a different of uh, also uh, common in uh, neighborhood um, fire strong horizontal. 
long line that aligns with uh, the table or the group line, the eave line, um, and separates the materials, uh, masonry with brick, shingle siding. We've tried to pull out those from those elements. Uh, and at the same time, we're trying to customize the material. This one is uh, has a cable uh, or a, a transom that is uh, just a clear glass. And again, uh, this um, Queen Anne style uh, home, many of these have strong horizontal uh, at that upper level that bisects the upper window. Again, the stacking, the vertical stacking of the windows on those, and then the secondary gable form and the rectangular uh, and, and as you can see, there's quite a variety uh, within the neighborhood on the widths of the nested gable form. They usually change to get the space that's found within uh, living room, upper bedroom. Those forms, uh, and then the secondary form uh, relays uh, what's um, at that point off often off is, is uh, the entry, which is um, set back slightly on the front. Uh, and many of these have porches. We work with staff to uh, develop uh, many of them have a unifying porch that form. And this one on the right has a, a real strong uh, horizontal element. Uh, then this one, um, these are a couple other um, uh, houses within the district that have windows that are just for the corners. Um, this one has an extra both side. Uh, Sides towards the corners. There still is a wall element, um, so we take two those. But the, 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 within those spaces, the, 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 uh, this is another one um, on Emerson with a duplex that comes together. Um, it, it does have windows that are pushed uh, on, a, on the side facades and on the front facades towards the corner. This is one in Washington, which is a packet that articulates that corner even more um, extensively with a group column right at the corner. Another example throughout the district um, uh, of elements of those, of those features. And I think that um, signifies the spaces that are, are within. And these are just other examples uh, that show the various widths. And you know, I think this is found with that throughout Denver. We're certainly pulling on the context of uh, of the Alamo district uh, neighborhood, but a lot of this variety of land valleys throughout Denver. And, uh, if we could go back to slides. I'm gonna pause you because it's gonna take me a moment to do. Yeah, so our, our intention is to, to utilize this nested cable form, uh, but create a, a house that meets the uh, needs of the modern family. Um, the width is articulated through the three structure. So we have a living room on the front, a uh, primary bedroom above, um, and that's also articulated on the rear side. So uh, inset entry, and I'm getting a fan porch. Uh, we have a strong horizontal line that is demarcating uh, masonry um, to shift to like a shingle siding. It's very typical for the Queen style. But we're trying to do that um, in a time and period that is current to today. So it's articulating that in the modern context. Uh, we do have a transom window. All of our windows align, the headers align. And that also Uh, 
Um, that aligns with uh, the transom that we have there. So, so the wind is on the south side. Uh, don't have transom, uh, but where it comes across, um, it and then it slides it up. Um, at the side entry, uh, where we have the door, we have uh, windows to support the corner. Uh, that reflects uh, a stairwell that's within that space. Uh, and then the windows uh, slide as well that articulate uh, entry um, flow and movement through the space and provide windows that accommodate that on the side and then articulate that on the outside. Uh, we feel that um, this is an element that is found within the district um, and has some contemporary um, application here, um, but has a context. Uh, it is our intention to utilize um, the uh, brick from the original structure uh, for the front structure, front portion of the house and the porch itself. So we would be reclaiming that brick it, using it. Um, the existing house is a uh, one story, 700 square foot or under house. So we have a little bit of resource um, for articulating that at the portion. Um, we have uh, shingle siding that's on the uh, larger rear table form that wraps around the north side and then again is articulated on the rear. On the south, we don't have uh, sufficient brick. We are putting a cementitious stucco uh, for the south side rear portion that we can articulate a similar composition on the rear um, and the foundation fields uh, that are appropriate. Uh, again, uh, uh, materials and things are for the next phase of the review, but it's our intention to take comments as it, as it addresses the form of the design uh, and information based on the comments. Um, and then we have the before you finish, sure. did you give your name and address? Oh, sure. um, my name is Aaron Hodgman. Yeah, yeah. Um, and my address is Commissioners, did you want to speak? Oh. <laughs> you don't have to. No, We're not going to force you to. My name is Paul Lorenz. Thank you. Commissioners, do you have any questions for the applicants? Um, what was the house built?
And one other, the, the window in the corner, is that illuminating a stairway? It is, yes. Larry. Yeah, I um, just wanted to know if there's a specific reason why you wanted to have those transit windows. Um, other than, uh, uh, well, I wanted to align the double hung windows that are on the south side and north working around the building. For those the line and then the trans window that has such a moment where it is called exterior and then where it's uh, integrated on the exterior of the building that has a good potential style. Um, we thought that a lot of the trans homes are potentially typical in the um, house is pulling that on as well, but but in a, in a modern Questions for the applicant? Sure. No. All righty. Thank you very much. Um, Brittany, did you have any other oh, public comment? Oh, public comment. I'm sorry. Uh, is there anyone out there in the public that wants to hear and anyone virtually that would like to come? Does it look like not seeing any hands? Okay. Uh, since there aren't any, uh, Brittany, did you have any additional comments? Do you? Oh. The reason for that is um, our permit clearly states section 36 6 that um, in no event, except for in the cases below, I can go into those, shall a demolition permit issued for a primary structure that is a structure for preservation or contributing to a district for preservation until the condition of the structure. And those exceptions really are that it's a non-contributing structure and it's an accessory structure or it's a threat to um, site safety, which this structure has not been classified by the building or public health or the fire official. Now that all being said, um, their insurance company, the applicant insurance company does not want anyone in this building and would like to be as small as restrictive as possible. Um, but that is not really typically allowed to happen. Again, it's really a permission that is I understand the applicant is frustrated that we uh, did recommend they reconstruct, but um, that was based on past experiences with the commission in which um, in my 10 years here, the commission has um, the commission structure. So we 
we do try to endeavor to give our applicants the best day. Sure, I understand. So um, help me out here. So the sounds like the commission does not have it's not within our purview to allow demolition before phase two has been approved. Adam? Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Brittany, thank you. Commissioners, do you have any other questions for staff? Question. Um, window configurations. I wasn't quite sure yet. Is that a phase one or a phase two? That's a good two. The, the windows themselves are phase two. The openings that are phase one. So yeah. if you all are doing, um, if the the transom would make the window opening bigger than you would normally approve, then that oh, it, it, it's it's a slippery slope. But the side window would be something that we would discuss in the space. Yeah, and the location of windows besides the openings. The um, yeah. Okay. All right. I guess I have one more. Okay. Um, right. I know this is for phase two, um, but I know the applicant would really, really appreciate the feedback on the materials because I have already indicated to them that that feel that is to be materials. Okay. Being brick, shingle, and stucco. And stucco. And stucco. Okay. All right. Brittany, thank you for that. Okay. Uh, before we deliberate, commissioners, any other questions for staff? No. Okay, great. All right, then let's let's do go into deliberation. Um, commissioners, what are your thoughts? Since the second floor window is illuminating a stairway, um, which you know kind of tangentially makes it a sort of a health and safety issue, I have no problem with uh, uh, the commission asking for a, a different design in size. But I can see why they wouldn't want to relocate it. So I think as long as you need light on a stairway, um, if it is out of proportion, it needs to be set into proportion. But Moving it, I can see that causing the problem on the stairs. My, uh, my second point was on the transoms. Um, you know, th this is yeah, lots. You see lots of transom windows in Queen Anne's. Uh, some of them are stained glass. Some of them are leaded glass. Almost nothing. Some of them just have the address stenciled on them. Um, a plain, a plain window window. Well, it's a, that's a simplified version of. 
or modernized version of what has gone before. So it's a placeholder for the history. Do I think it, you know, I, I think if, if it's attractive, that's a personal opinion, but I don't think there's a reason there to say you, you eliminate uh, a need for a transom window because this is a modern application of a transom window. So everybody, I'd use that on the middle window in the, and the transoms. So you're saying to leave the transoms as they are. You can leave the transoms as they are. I don't say they're they're beautiful or or, or anything because the when you see other ones, they're you know a little more uh, either they either have a, a brick or stone detail around them or or something that makes them pop out a bit. Uh, but we are distinguishing old from new from old, and uh, on the other hand. It, you know, that would be okay for that. Clarify something real fast. Um, I'm looking at the plans and it appears that the uh, the second floor window on the north side um, at the corner is not illuminating the stair itself. It's illuminating a double height space for the foyer. So, oh, you probably have an open stair rating, but I agree. Hmm? The configuration of the corner window is better than 17 feet tall. That could be Right, yeah. I think there's plenty of ways for them to illuminate that with that area of the house. Okay. All right. Yes, I agree with that, but I think, I think um, Brittany made it clear that the, the opening is proportional to um, what we see in um, the surrounding context, and I agree with that, that, that I wouldn't want to see the opening change, but the way the windows are kind of configured within that, I think there is some room and that the transom as shown presently, I think is too um, tall, um, proportionately the windows that go below it. So it's a smaller transom perhaps working if that's what the applicant is meant to do. But, um, and as far as the corner window goes, I, I appreciate what Larry raised with it. And in some ways, if we weren't kind of being directed to look at a four square and the example of corner windows there and see this, this is purely a contemporary um, element rather than trying to replicate something that is seen on a historic building that is not the same type of form and style that overall this house is um, trying to emulate or, or fit within. I, I could see that perhaps working, but I, I do have concerns about taking um, that element from what we see on four square houses and putting it on this Queen Anne form, um, particularly because in some ways the corner windows on four squares have always struck me as slightly awkward in a, in a lovable way. <laughs> um, but I don't think I, I, I they're, they work or they can. They're found on those types of buildings. I love corner windows and they obviously can be on other types of buildings too, but I think using this Queen Anne form um, and the corner window in this context just um, doesn't work and I don't think meets guideline 4.3 or 4.8. Okay, Erica, thank you. And well, I agree with, I agree with so, um, what everybody is saying and I think you know, at baseline, and we're talking about um, mass forming context, that this project needs 4.3 in terms of its um, uh, configuration. Um, and I think one of the problems with looking at it is that there's information that's shown here that's actually for the next phase, and it's hard to mm -hmm. not see it, which is one of the problems with the transit. It's hard to yeah. not see the transit. 
even though we understand that that's not actually in this phase. And um, getting to the issue about materials, and again, it's not really mass forming content. I think to be the thing that throws it off the most is that heavy lintel that's in the, that's over the second floor mm -hmm. transom that's actually in a shingle material. And I, and I say this because the applicant wanted some some feedback about materials and that is um you know as with the corner window it's an element from the wrong place it doesn't uh, you wouldn't have a steel lintel under any circumstances expressed that way in a shingle uh facing gable and so perhaps the solution is just to make that whole front face brick in which case if that was and again this is just a friendly comment if that was really the applicant's um, interest and maybe just taking that whole front face brick and ha and having that um, wrinkle there would make more sense. But as I said, it's hard for me to look at this and not see some of the information that's in it that's really based. <laughs> I think the envelope is great. The envelope really needs to guide it. Uh, I don't see a problem with that. You know, I think that we've had problems where things have come back just a second time in the window. Comes in the window. Um, uh, well, we sort of different, and then we look at it and we say, if we approve it, and everybody says, yes, we approve it, it's just hard to understand exactly how that's going to work and how to take the influence on um, the look of the project. Can I just clarify something? It, I mean, I understand that two different phases, it seems to me, and I think this is what you were getting at, Jen. The windows, the the amount of what we are looking at with the windows overlaps between the two phases. And that you have not only the opening that of course we want to kind of get settled in phase one, but that the proportions of the windows within those openings can be discussed now, but and then kind of cemented in phase two. And so I think it's I think it is so appropriate to talk about, you know, the, because the proportions of the windows within the opening, as we've discussed, ha, you know, has a big impact, um, not just the opening itself. So, um, yeah, just wanted to make that clear that it's not that we should leave it entirely for phase two. I think it is appropriate for us to talk about. Gary, did you have? Well, one was that uh, I don't have a problem with the notion of transoms, but the proportion of the transoms. Um, regarding, you know, I was bothered by that trim element above the second story window. And it, it, if it's a trim element, it might need trim to go all the way around it, uh, rather than just stuck on like that. As far as exterior materials were concerned, it, uh, I, I, I think I think the shingles in the gable end of the nested gable is okay, but not on the rest of the body of the house. Um, and the, 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 the side that is that would be the Sorry. north side, the north side, and part of the east side is uh, expressed to be shingles, and I know that's phase two, but um, I think to have two, three different materials on the main body of the house is too much. Yeah. It doesn't meet the, the guideline. Um, to have shingles in a, in a decorative element like the one gable end, that would be accepted as far as I'm concerned. That's not too many materials. And the corner window, um, I like corner windows, but this is the wrong style to have. Is um, a thought on the whole relation with those. Um, that I think part of what is sort of throwing me off about the um, corner window over the door is the fact that in the entire front facade, it's the largest of the double hung yeah, windows. Yeah. And I think that relationship is backwards. Um, so I think. Uh, uh, Comment for based consideration uh, the relationship between 
secondary windows and primary windows as far as the those components. Um, I think as far as the materials, I'm a little bit of I'm a little bit on the fence about, I mean, I don't totally disagree with Gary's comment that the amount of detail with having shingles kind of wrapping around the entire side of the house does seem a lot, but at the same time, I do want to keep the conversation open to the idea that this is a contemporary interpretation and not necessarily that we're trying to recreate, you know, and I think the same thing also about kind of window um, patterns, I think, yeah, that's my thought, I guess, with the corner windows that if everything else is kind of pretty straightforwardly within, within um, patterns, then is there a little bit of room for like one element to deviate and become the more contemporary piece? I, I agree with that, Larry. I feel like a lot of times we're like, we, getting too, we're too much of a replication of the historic language of, say, a Queen Anne that Allowing some deviation for a contemporary study, I think, is valid and we need guidelines. I'm not going to say what that is, but if we're referencing that corner window just as a four square, then maybe it doesn't go with the Queen Anne. But what if it's just a contemporary expression of a corner window? You know, what if it is completely glass budding with the corner? You know, very contemporary instead of with a column or some such. But I just get this worry that a lot of times we're going too much to a strict interpretation of one design and not allowing some flexibility and openness for it to be a contemporary expression of something. And that's what worries me a little bit because I think you need the design guidelines without it being just strictly all clean and language. And as far as some of these elements, I'm I'm fine with the transom. Yes, let's have it studied more in details and then maybe even the trimming around it in the detail phase will make it step up to that next level of being an expressive window instead of just um, two plain windows on the front. But there's things in the details section that they can do to like elevate that or make it more contemporary or more tie in more with the um, expressive windows that are in the district. So I just throw my thoughts. And that lintel trim piece across there, I think, it, I mean, it, it shows in a lot of the historic photos from the um, examples, and maybe it's just the positioning or exact location that needs to be finessed. And I would actually like to see it on the back of the main form of the house as well, because a lot of the, um, it's just such a flat facade there. So yeah. if I could use some articulation, whether it's through shingles only in the gable and a different material below, or just some articulation of the flat facade. Great. So I'm hearing a couple of different things. Um, so we we are interested in restudying the windows. Yes. Um, now the side window. Brittany, can you help me out? The side window is is technically phase two, correct? No, uh, no. Is, is this is this one? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I might set up the sort of I don't explicitly say this is a condition, yeah. but I do talk about how like we can have a placement. I don't know. Right. That's not really. Okay. Thanks. So, um, Commission, before we go for it, so I, I kind of share some of Aaron's concern. Yes, the corner window is an element of the Denver Square. But this is contemporary, and are we shutting off the creative process? Just throwing that out there, Gary. Well, I'm kind of schizophrenic about this. 
because you know i i personally i prefer a a new building in a in a historic context to be more respectful of the historic context and actually flirt with some replication that's personal opinion i know that's not guidelines <laughs> on the other <laughs> hand I, 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 on the other hand the kind of um, kind of contemporary expression that we're talking about, uh, including putting a corner window in a Queen Anne, can be very good if it is exquisitely detailed, you know, and so, so it's really in the details. And it's kind of hard to uh, say, yes, corner window is acceptable, we'll look at it in details, versus uh, how many times might it take before that corner window is detailed in a way that we can all agree to that? I'm saying that, um, that, that it's, that's safer to say no corner windows, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Although I agree that you know, I, when I saw the corner window, I kind of like that it bothers me more that there's two windows on one facade and one on the main facade rather than one on one, coming from, which is really the more common expression historically. Um, and I think we completely confused the uh, applicant. Yeah. Um, you know, so in, in terms of the, the proposed motion, I think um, I think we're okay really with the idea of transoms over the windows as long as the proportions are more thoughtfully worked out. As far as the corner window is concerned, I don't know where the census is right now. Yeah. But it, it could be it could be acceptable if it is really detailed nicely as a, a kind of an innovative contemporary expression of a, in a Queen Anne uh, uh, sort of overall context. Related to the corner window, uh, guideline four point eight. Talks about incorporating windows and plants ratios for the similar proportion, which gets to the first one, the second one, the But then he says using contemporary patterns, which they are compatible with the character of the proportions, not necessarily referencing a specific style. And then guideline 4.3 uh, you know, talks about specifically window locations. And I think that's the only place in the guidelines where the location. Again, not referencing style, and then the window above it and the a stair from the side. And so I feel comfortable with the with the comments that Larry and Larry have made. And in the course of the interior plants, and then more would be kind of right of the primary facade of those. And then sort of the justification that the applicant may choose for applying a corner window or not, a corner window based on the location. So Maybe a senior condition that the window proportions. I know this would be where we want to set up staff about a more prescriptive yeah. design piece, but the windows and the general location and proportion of the interior opening for acceptance of the of the demonstration. And you said, well, that's all the way. So I feel like we put the pros in it. I, I hate to throw a slight wrench in this. I agree generally with what you're saying, Graham, but I do wonder about whether the corner window, the the, the size of the opening, is acceptable. <laughs> yeah, um, because of both what I think you brought up, Larry, as far as the height of it, and it's kind of hard to see. Um, how it compares to the windows in the projecting gable um, portion, but also um, you know the idea of two windows on the side, um, considering that kind of one opening, I guess, within the the wall. So I I'm just throwing that out there of like I'm not entirely I I can go with being welcoming of a corner window. And transoms with a restudy of how that works, 
but I don't know if the size of that corner window is entirely right yet. And, may, and maybe we can still move to phase two with that, but that, um, that that should also be part of a kind of reconfiguration and study of how these windows work together. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be that annoying person and say that I'm getting texts from staff saying they can't hear anything Graham's saying. So, <laughs> and that was like brilliant. Yeah, yes. you'd be Let's really be impressed. <laughs> Please, that would be awesome, Graham. <laughs> So I, I move that director conditions approved application 2023-COA-1 for the phase one mass building context at 415 Park Station. Per design guidelines 4.1, 3.6, 4.8, character defined as features from the elements and historic district. Sent to testimony, submitted documentation, information provided in the staff report, following condition that the windows be restudied at the second floor corner and the current transit configuration to better meet guidelines 4.3 and 4.8 as discussed in deliberation by the team. So here, second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? The, uh, the motion passes unanimously, and we are on to our next project. Yeah, who was the second? It was Larry. Larry. <laughs> oh, I usually call it. I think it was Larry. I thought it was Larry. Oh, wow. yeah. The speed of sound. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, boy, that <laughs> um, so next project and our last design review project is 2023-COA-123. At 332 Ogden Street, Alamo, also Alamo. Okay, our next project is for a rear connector addition um, that will connect the primary structure and a new, um, a new garage. So the applicant is proposing to demolish the existing original garage that is located on the north side of the property in this aerial image here. Um, however, garages are not considered contributing elements in the Alamo Cotija Historic District, um, so therefore staff um, was supportive of the garage demolition. Um, so here is the primary structure. It was constructed in 1934. It is a contributing structure to the Alamo Cotija um, Historic District. It's a very simple, very small story structure, um, and the applicant is proposing a large connecting addition. So here is the proposed addition. Um, so the applicant is proposing this addition um, instead of a pop top addition to the structure, um, which would be allowed if we do allow pop top additions. However, it is very hard to pop stable structures. Um, so staff was generally supportive of a, um, a rear one story connector addition because it did achieve project goals. Um, without altering the roof form um, and will be minimally visible from the public right away, although it is a little bit larger than we typically see for connector additions. Um, this will house a master bedroom. Um, and then you can see the new garage. So the existing garage is located at the property line. The new garage will have um, a side interior setback of four feet. Um, is a flat roof structure and the uh, connector addition is a um, gable roof with a cross gable on the south elevation and then there will be a new concrete patio um, and some planters on the south side of the property 
Uh, the applicant has um, placed the addition at this uh, location to preserve as much of the south uh, side yard as possible. And it is inset um, from the north facade um, by uh, two feet, four inches. Um, so that's well over the uh, four inch, uh, the, um, the four inch offset required in our design. Um, to the primary structure, other than the rear addition, um, the applicant is also proposing a new concrete patio on the north side of the um, stoop, a new concrete walkway, and um, deconstruction of the stoop um, that is not code compliant. Um, it was very difficult to determine if this was the historic stoop. My inclination is no, because it is concrete, but again, it's very difficult to date those elements. Um, but looking at the Sanborn map, never did have a porch. Um, so staff are supportive of this concrete patio configuration and reconstruction of the stoop um, to be code compliant to match the existing configuration. Um, our guidelines do encourage when a front porch is not present to construct a patio um, to the side. Um, on the north elevation, the applicant is also uh, proposing to on the historic home to introduce um, two new egress windows, which we um, here. So there are existing uh, windows on the north elevation that will be cut down to accommodate uh, those egress. And then here on the um, front, uh, the two steps will be um, modified for that stoop. Um, and then on the rear, uh, demolition is minimal. Um, you can see where the demolition is proposed. So the applicant is proposing to convert an existing uh, window opening into a door opening and then demolish this um, existing shade cover and the addition to this portion of the building facade. And then this window here will be in so. Um, so I'll show you all that in elevation. Um, so here is the proposed front elevation. Again, um, the alterations to the front stoop are very minimal in nature and really won't have an impact on historic context and new concrete patio added to the north side. And then at the rear, we have um, the new, uh, new garage addition. And I think I said previously the flat roof. Um, it is actually a gable roof, so my apologies. That's um, incorrect, um, incorrect uh, characterization of the garage structure. Um, the garage and the addition are proposed to be stucco to provide a contrast and change in material from the primary structure. Um, however, on the south elevation, the um, cross gable form will be clad in brick um, and it will have a step gable detail that matches the step gable detail of the primary structure. Um, the primary structure, the step gable detail is in stone and the applicant is proposing to to do the step gable detail on this uh, cross gable bump out in um, just brick. So it will be simpler interpretation of the architectural details that are found on the existing structure. Um, additionally, the addition is proposed to have windows that are similar to the windows down on the primary structure. Um, staff did not have big concerns over these, although these windows are super similar. Um, these are not the original windows on this home. The only original window on this home is on this south elevation, and it was a historic steel window. Um, so typically we do re recommend simplification, but with the change in material and the fact that these are not the original windows to begin with, uh, we did not have concerns over um, the window configuration here, but they are a simulated divided light, um, mostly uh, a, um, a double hung operation, but there are some things in the um, addition. Uh, more on the north side, not super visible located to the rear. Um, so the applicant did make this facade co planer. Um, in their original submittal, there was uh, several changes in wall plane that staff did have concerns over. The applicant did simplify um, the articulation of the north facade based on staff comments. Um, and did also simplify the materials to a stucco to uh, the material. And here you can see those new egress windows that are proposed for the historic structure. Um, so finally, I just have some renderings of what this looks like in elevation. 
Um, so this is, uh, you do have this in your packet. It's pretty small, but it is in there so you can zoom way in. Um, but they have this view as a current photograph and then um, the addition uh, added in perspective. Um, so again, it is minimally visible from the public right away, um, but it is meeting our design guidelines and it's generally meeting the overall applicant goals without adding a pop top addition to the structure. And then here's what um, it looks like from the alley on that south elevation, but um, that south elevation will be much harder to see from the public right away, which where this property is along Ogden Street, uh, we don't typically consider garage. So we are recommending approval um, with some conditions, um, and those are just uh, fairly simple conditions. Um, the stucco is indicated to be a cementitious stucco, but the depth of that stucco is not um, included in the packet, so it must be at least seven eighths of an inch thick. And then um, provide a windows a section showing that the windows are inset into the wall plane. And as this brick is brick and stucco construction, I'm assuming they're inset to the, into the wall plane. And that's typically what you see, but we'll just like that confirmed. All right, Brittany. Uh, commissioners, are there any questions for Brittany? I think this is more a question for the applicant, but the front stoop um, in the I didn't catch it on the drawings, but the um, photos, the rendering and the photo, the photo as existing shows just concrete and the proposed shows that like a brick yeah. facing. I think that's a great question for the applicant because okay. I also think to the handrail is not there currently. Right. The okay, thank you. Okay. Anything else for Brittany before we move on? Okay, great. Brittany, thank you. Um, do we have the applicant with us? Yeah. Okay. All right. Applicant, can you hear us? I can, okay. yes. Hi, there you are. Great. Um, you'll have 10 minutes to tell us about your project. And when you start, please, with your name and your address for our records. Uh, absolutely. And, and I'm the homeowner and I'll pass it to uh, our architect. Okay. Bill Mayo. Um, I just wanted to say a few words, but my name is Jerry Darie uh, and the address is 332 North Ogden Street, Denver, Colorado, 80218. Uh, okay. To address the, the question regarding the stoop, it, it does have a, um, a brick front and, and a concrete uh, top currently. Um, and, and the railing is just on the right hand side. Uh, Bill can go into more detail, but I'm, my, my understanding is it's not up to code currently. Um, but I just wanted to introduce myself and, and say a couple words about the project. When my wife uh, and I were looking for homes in Denver, um, we, we homed in on Alamo Placita, largely in part because of the historic value of the neighborhood. And it's something that we really value in our own home and, and something we think we've um, achieved great preservation of uh, in these designs. And, you know, it's important to us that this sort of be our forever home. That's how we regard it. Um, my, my parents happen to live just a mile away from here and we see them frequently. Uh, my wife's family visits um, from Brazil with some frequency and we wanna have this house be comfortable for them to, to visit us in and also to accommodate our growing family. Um, and as Brittany said, we, we, we didn't want to do a pop top that was, it's just, it just seemed like it would do violence to the historic value of the home. And so we've, we've landed on this design that, um, that, that we're confident in. And I uh, just wanted to thank you for your consideration. And thank you, Brittany, for working with Bill over the last few weeks to get the plans where they are now. And uh, I'll pass it over to Bill to talk specifics. Great. Thanks, Jared. Bill, are you with us? Bill? I'm sorry. Yeah. Can you hear me? Hi there. Hi. Hi. Could you start with your name and address, please? Sure. So I am Bill DeMeo. I live at 1880 Little Raven Street in Denver, 80202. Um, so, uh, yes, when the Dariais uh, started this project, we talked a lot about how this addition would work uh, and work best for them. And the house faces, I don't know that we've really kind of gone through this, but it faces Alamo Placida Park. So this block has quite a prominence and 
and yet it also has a very low scale uh, setting to it. And they decided they would much rather have the addition in the back than looming above uh, some of the other adjacent properties. So that's how we started this. And then the reconstruction of the garage uh, occurs because currently it's a side load garage that uh, really eats up a lot of space in the back of the house. And the prevailing pattern in the, in the neighborhood is uh, alley facing garage doors. So that's, that was the reason we did that. And in addition to just creating a garage, that's more uh, consistent for modern use. So um, as you see, the detailing on the, on the addition is very sim simple. The house is very simple. And we just decided to kind of keep things uh, very uh, consistent with the detailing on the house. So the stepped gable uh, is one of the features of the house that has some distinctive character. And that was the only reason for trying to interpret that in a different way on the addition that still maintains some uh, historic integrity. So I'm uh, happy to answer any questions that you guys have uh, that we're doing. And Gary, it's good to see you. It's been a while. I'm glad you're still on the commission. <laughs> Great. I was hiding. <laughs> Effectively, uh, apparently. Thank you very much. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions for the applicants? Could you just speak a little bit um, about the, the current um, condition of the stoop and then what is proposed? Sure. So the current stoop is uh, in pretty bad condition. But the main issue with the stoop is that it's too small. Uh, there's, a, there's a security screen door on the house that you cannot uh, open without sweeping somebody off of that platform. So mm -hmm. that's the reason for enlarging it and creating something a little bit more gracious for allowing somebody to enter the house. And the railing is, is actually existing on one side. We're proposing to basically uh, match it on the other side just so that there's uh, more accessible access to that upper landing. Thank you. Other questions for the applicants? Commissioners? No? Okay. I, 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 Gary I, does. I have a question um, about the color of the stucco. Mm -hmm. are, are you proposing the light? I don't know if it's white or off white. Are you proposing that color, first of all, the integral and is that really your choice or are you responding to your understanding of a guideline or standard? Uh, the idea of the stucco, it's actually a cream sort of buff color. Uh, the idea of that is actually to match the mortar color that uh, currently exists on the brick. So um, our plan is to salvage the brick from the garage to clad our gable on the south elevation of the house and use the same mortar color so that the consistency uh, continues throughout the addition, uh, color-wise. Okay, thank you. All right, great. Thank, uh, any other questions for the applicants? Yes. No, all right, uh, applicants, thank you very much. Um, do we have any uh, comments from anyone in the public that would like to talk? See the hands don't raised. See the hands raised. No. Okay, uh, Brittany, did you have any comments you want to make before we go to deliberation? Um, yeah. So, we are the rendering that are showing the elevation of which name is Becca. Clarity on that from the applicant. Ask that again. Erica, did you want to ask that again? Yeah, thank you. Could you just give a little? clarification on the material of the stoop. So um, it, there's some confusion as to whether you're proposing to have just concrete or have um, like a brick veneer facing on the, the riser or, or anywhere else. Yeah. Sure. So the, uh, the existing stoop is a concrete structure faced with brick. So the risers are brick uh, and we were planning to replicate that in the new sized um, porch. It just has, a, it's, it's a nicer detail than just doing an entirely concrete porch. Okay, it looks like maybe on the photo, maybe the 
the base step is faced with brick and maybe the upper ones aren't? Is that th th that's correct. So the, it's a veneer on the upper and the, the base step is is brick on top as well. Oh, I see. Got it. Okay. But the proposal is to have it all risers faced with the brick. Correct. Yes. Okay. Follow up on that. Would that continue around to the patio? Uh, it would not. The patio would would be concrete alone. Um, we would tend. We would probably landscape the face of the patio to try to conceal it from the street. And the idea behind the patio basically is because the house faces the park. Uh, the Dariés love to sit out there and, and interact with their neighbors, and currently they can only sit on that stoop to do that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. The stoop, the configuration is it's curved as it should be. It, it is curved. It's a curved. Okay. It is curved. Yeah. The handrail on one side. Currently. Yeah, Currently. Okay. Um, Currently, there's one, there's a railing on one side of the stoop, and you're proposing to basically extend the stoop out, keep its kind of curved plan and have a railing on either side? That's correct. Yes. So just the site plan only shows one railing. That's correct. Exactly. All right. I don't know if they heard that. <laughs> All right. Do we have any other questions about the stoop or anything else? <laughs> um, Brittany, to follow up, I would add those as conditions for clarity on those details um, based on discussion. All right. All right. Thanks, Brittany. All right, applicants, I think I think you're done now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, you. All right, since there were no public comments, um, Staff, you have any other comments? Um, this is a very small scale block of Alamo for research. Okay, great. All right, uh, commissioners, let's go into deliberation, please. I want to start with just a comment that I think some of our guidelines I thank you for that word, the applicants. Yes. I think that's true even for Intel projects. Yeah. Yeah, they're having trouble. Yeah. Well, the big problem is that it used to be that the microphone was up there. It is now right in front of me. Oh, gosh. Oh, okay. That's uh -huh. not what you need. Yeah. 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 Did you hear? He, he's, he thanked you for your thoughtfulness and your design and scale. And we all appreciated the word that, you know, that you didn't want to commit violence on a, on a, a little house. So thank you for that. Yeah, we're having a little, you know, we, we just reconfigured with the microphone in this in, in this uh, room. So we're having a little trouble getting used to it. Our apologies. It's, it's like right, right there. there. It's, and it's on got a chair. And it's got a chair in front of it. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, thank you for hanging with us. But at any rate, it's your Any other comments, Erica? I, I would just say that I um, this maybe is skewing more towards the conservative side when we were talking about you know contemporary, and but I, I think it's a lovely project. I think it works very well with the existing historic house, and I appreciate the um, the detailing on the um, the gable the, um, of the master bedroom. Um, I think that's a really nice touch and I think it works very well and meets our guidelines. So um, thank you. Other, other thoughts? I, I do actually want to go 
make sure that the front stoop is clarified because if there is actually a second handrail, they'll wait to get to the back. If you look at the configuration, and so I don't think that it's it's a deal breaker one way or the other, but I think there's a little bit of lack of clarity about that. But I also agree, I think that the configuration and the detail is really just a good job with the guidelines and expanding the house. I would be very supportive of this That's one thing. Okay, then does somebody want to try to make a motion to that effect? Including Anne's, include Anne's concerns. Okay, Erica. Uh, I move to conditionally approve application number 2023-COA-123 for the connector addition attached garage, new stoop and site work at 332 Ogden Street as per guidelines 2.18, 2.39, 3.4 through 3.7, 3.9, 4.18 through 4.20, character mm -hmm. defining features for the Alamo Placida Historic District, presented testimony, submitted documentation and information provided in the stock report, the following conditions. One, confirm the thickness of the stucco to be at least uh, seven eighths of an inch thick. Two, provide a window section showing windows are inset into the wall plane at least two inches or to match the existing windows. And three, confirm details regarding the stoop uh, materials and railing placement. Do I hear a second? Graham has seconded it. All right, then let's take a vote. All in favor, aye. 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 Nay. Abstain. None. All right, it unanim unanimously passed. Thank you very much. All right, so that is the last of our design review projects. Are there any business items? Um, I just wanted to let you guys know about a little bit of excitement with Landmark staff. So Brittany was just promoted to principal planner. So congratulations. Yay. Yay. Um, which means that she is going to be sitting through next time. And I am going to be listening in and not heckling you about speaking louder. I'll talk to her about it. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, um, the planning board has a principal planner that um, that manages the planning board, and so we will have a principal planner that will finish the landmark preservation commission. And uh, but I will be here. I will not be like not gone. I'll be listening in. I might even come and sit at the side sometimes and um, all of that. So oh, cool. anyway, um, it's been a pleasure to to um, hang out with you all for many years. And I apologize for the last two meetings that I missed. They were um, one, I did not want to give you guys a stomach bug. So uh, there's that. And the other one, um, I had a family emergency and had to fly back to New York. And uh, the great news is that my family member is doing much better. And um, so uh, I don't have to fly back to New York right now again. So, so. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jen. But congratulations to Brittany for her promotion. Yeah. It's been great. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, the, the role that the principal panel will play, or the Brittany will play, is uh, to staff the Landmark Preservation Commission, the Lower Downtown Design Review Commission, to do a lot of design review work um, and to also uh, manage our design guideline update process. So we'll be hearing from her about that and the rest of the team. All right. Great. Congratulations, Brittany. Elton John, Senator President. <laughs> her glasses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> her happy glasses. They need windshield wipers like Elton. I just want to say that as of today, uh, my house received its first. Yay. Yay. I was wondering about that. With a great deal of help from staff, all of whom turned up. It was actually Aww. Cool. So, great. great. Congratulations. Thanks for doing that. That was fun. So, the, the, this is so pre preservationists don't do math. Um, so the number that will be on your plaque and the official number of your landmark is a different number than the consecutive numbers of landmarks we have because there was one that was skipped and there's one that was designated and stuff like that. So anyway, um, Wait, he designated? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and that, wasn't yours. and that was because it was demolished, I think. Oh, yeah, down, down, like, yeah, ever yeah. down. Yeah, something. I mean, there's like, it, there's a lot of. No, no. Um, but so, so anyway, um, your house is, is unofficially landmark number three hundred fifty nine, 
um, your official number is bigger than that. And I can't remember exactly what it is, but we officially have 359 individual landmarks and 58 historic districts. Um, and, and that number keeps growing, which is delightful. So thanks to owners like you. Okay. Well, now it's a good time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a Monday. There, no, so, yeah, so um, there's a bunch of them. So the um, Allen Dolan Gas House is happening on, going to city council on um, May 15th, I believe. And then next meeting, you have a, a district designation for La Raza Park that's going forward to you all. Um, you, it is a small district. It's, um, it's um, and it, it's, it's, yeah, it's La Raza Park. It's entirely city um, supported or entirely owner supported because it is the city who owns it. So <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so there's that one. Um, and that one is going forward just if, if it goes through to you all and you all recommend it to city council, it would go forward, um, I think, at the end of June, I believe. So, um, sometime in June, for sure. So, yeah. 1741 Gaylord, is it? 1741. Yeah, that's going to uh, city council for a public hearing on Monday. So, so, those are the ones that are moving through your process that you've seen or are about to see. Anything else for the good of the order? All right, then I will adjourn this meeting. It's uh, eight. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Got it. <laughs>